Good afternoon. Um, I'm Shuichi Hara, uh, Data Direct Networks. Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, T10PI end-to-end the raster integrity. Um, some of the some of the people um, ex have experienced the data corruption, but some of the people um, experience the recover the, from the data corruption. But always the data corruption is really you know painful, right? Um, it's you know less happen, but the once that happen, it's really you know the mess. Uh, the cost is really high. Then you have to do a lot of a lot of the um, unusual operation to recover. Then you know it's a step by step process, the procedure, uh, to from the recover uh, to recover. Uh, the many the many reason you know that cause the data corruption. Um, some of the case you know facility problem, um, the power outage, um, some of the you know facility problem. Um, some of the case you know hardware problem, including the network. Um, then of course the, you know. Software the defect and software bugs, the corruption as well. Uh, then finally, you know, the human errors also the cause of data corruption. So many, you know, many the potential the cause of data corruption here. Um, so if we look at the more uh, data corruption in detail, uh, I think that there is a two major the corruption types. So one of the corruption, the so latent the uh, sector block error. Which is a uh, application can cannot read the data, um, then the device is return the error. So which is good. So the you know something the error uh, something the device is return to the you know, user, you know user or the administrator understands something that hap the bad situation that happened. But uh, the another corruption on uh, silent data corruption, this is really painful because the if the application the the application can read the data, then however, the, the read the data is corrupted. It's not expected the data, it's valid, not validated. Uh, so that is a, that situation that caused another the silent corruption because the, you know, the application is a read the data, it's expected, but uh, then so the going to the another, another the process, but uh, you know, data, the, the read of the data is corrupted, then the next, you know, next procedure, was, of course, is corrupted. It's more the making the, the corruption the making the more another corruption. So, uh, so, so where does the silent corruption happen? Uh, why does this happen? So, uh, so many place the potential um, the data corruption, uh, the silent data corruption. So uh, your application or the you know, memory on the operating system, the hardware, uh, HBA, um, storage fabric, any place, so, uh, you know, many reasons to cause the, you know, silent corruption. Um, so reason why, um, the most of the cases are, you know, lack of the, the data integrity, because, uh, you know, um, storage stack is a very, you know, stackable, you know, the st you know storage system is a, you know, stackable uh, component. And each of the component trust you know, upper layer and then the lower layer, but uh, you know, each of them is lack of the, you know, checking. So that's the cause of the you know, corruption. So we are, so in here, so we are really focusing on the, the how, how protect the silent, silent data corruption on the last file system. Uh, so the data integrity on the last today, um, so we have a last checksum, uh, last checksum uh, from the last client um, to the last server. Then this is uh, the protect the, the server and the client, then long the you know, RPC handling. So if the, you know, the RPC is corrupted. However, so we have a, you know, we have a checksum between the client and the server, but we, we don't store the you know, checksum to the disk. Just uh, you know, the checking the between the server and the client. On the backend side, so we have uh, uh, the EXT4, they have a uh, you know, metadata checksum, but uh, we, don't, we don't enable the metadata checksum on the last file system today. Uh, ZF, so we have another you know, backend file system option, the ZFS. So ZFS has a very strong the integrated feature, 
uh, they have uh, in the copy on write um, a transaction based uh, uh, operation. Uh, then end to end, a lot of the checksum of each of the transaction. Then scrub future. The, a lot of the future is the protect your data integrity on the ZFS. However, still, you know, this is a protect inside of ZFS, um, not the end to the last end to end of the integrity. So uh, we are we are looking um, at uh, this is not enough. Uh, so we are, some of the missing the you know the guarantee. Uh, some of the you know missing the guarantee on the some place. Uh, for example, you can imagine so once the client sends the RPC, then once the uh, you know server is received the RPC, but we we didn't checking anymore after you know the last checksum. So we are trust the data is arrived the you know the valid data is arrived, then sending to the you know the data to the disk. Um, there was there was a uh, similar the project the, beha the before uh, the Zydex, uh the Seagate is a, the submitted the patch the the couple of years ago uh, this was also uh, end to end the data integrity with the T10 PI uh, however so that that's required um, the that's required the replace the last checksum mechanism with a new the uh, last checksum mechanism with the T10 PI, um, then eventually the project, the patch was abandoned. So now we are going to the taking over uh, last checksum, end-to-end uh, -end integrity. Um, I want to I wanna introduce a little bit, so what is the T10 PI and DIX um, here? Uh, T10 PI, this is the one of the standard format. So there is a three additional the tag uh, into the, um, on the drive sector. So now we, we have you know, 4K you know, 512 the sector drives. So we have a, a three of another you know, uh, tag. So the uh, guard tag, so we store the you know, checksum into the guard tag. The app tag is uh, for the application. Uh, reference tag is uh, used mainly. We use we store the you know LBA to the you know, guard or the reference tag, but as, you know app tag and the reference tag is still you know customizable, so we can we can store the, any you know information over both of the tag. So T10 PI again. So this is a um, um, definition the between the HBA and the disk. So you need to have the T10 PI support the HBA and drives to enable the T10 PI. Then some of the case, so you have a you know, storage array on top of the disk. Then if you, in order to enable the T10 PI or end-to-end -end integrity, so your storage, your storage array needs to support the you know, T10 PI. Um, then, um, the HBA or the storage array need to support uh, the DIX. So DIX is a data integrity extension, which is uh, um, extend the another uh, uh, extend um, the protect another uh, another remained layer remained layer from the HBA to the application of the operating system. So in here. So T10 PI is uh, between the HBA and the disk. Then DIX is uh, you know, providing the another, ex uh, another uh, um, uh, data protection the, from the HBA to the in application. So, the event, so at the end, so we have uh, the from the application, the operating system to the, uh, to, to the disk with the T10 PI and the, um, with the DIX. So we so we started the uh, um, T10 PI uh, end to end integrity for Rasta with the T10 PI. Uh, so uh, this is a, a proposal design. So we started the implementation. Uh, so uh, we still keep the fully fully the transparent the end to end integrity from the Rasta client to the server. So the user of the application doesn't care on the checksum or the you know uh, T10 PI or DX. So once it's uh, automatically enabled or disabled, 
on the between the last client of the server. Uh, so rely on the on the open rely on the TTMP either format. Um, then you know TTMP, if you have the TTMP or the DX support the hardware, so it, all it works. It's nothing that you know vendors you know vendor lock uh, the future. Uh, so we don't we don't change the last uh, today's the last RPC format. Um, then so we just extend the current the last checksum framework then to support the you know, TTMPI. Then of course we have uh, you know additional checksum, but uh, so we really want to want to consider you know the minimum the performance impact after the last last TTMPI uh, after the you know, TTMPI enable the checksum. Then. Then of course they keep the you know, compatibility uh, for the old Rasta client or was a non TTMPI supported hardware as well. Uh, this is a quick the basic the data flow, the how the how the Rasta TTMPI works. So uh, before the you know, start before the start of Rasta server, so you need to you need to set up the new device, you know, the hardware on the HBA. So you need to sub, you need to have uh, you know the TTMPI support the HBA on the disk. Then so you load it you know the, jo the HBA driver on the host. So once you enable the you know TTMPI TTMPI on the disk on the your host. Uh, so you uh, so after that the you know last server automatically detect the host is you know whether host is support the TTMPI or not. Then so after that so the last so once the OS you know last server is started, so you can you can mount the you know last file system from client. Um, so the so once last so first negotiation first connection from the last client to the server, so last client to the last server then negotiating so the what the checksum is available so what is a suitable the checksum for the client, then if the you know TMPI is available on the last server. So that automatically the Rasta client select the you know, suitable the Rasta checksum with the TTMPI. So once you mount the Rasta file system on the Rasta client, so the another then after that, so that your application all the protect all the integrity from the Rasta client to the disk. So when you when you send the data from the Rasta client to the server, so we calculate the TTMPI on the Rasta client, then we send the you know, data to the server. With the TTMPI, then we check the, the TTMPI on the last checksum on the last server. Then so we recalculate the you know, TTMPI on the last server, then send the pass down to the uh, whole, uh, HBA on the disk. Then HBA also the capable capable H HBA has a capable uh, TTMPI, so that once the you know, HBA received the you know, request, so HBA the, uh, the verify the TTMPI. Uh, information, um, then so that if no the corrupted, so the data is going to going to the disk with the TTMPI. So we are we are we are calculating the you know TTMPI on the client. Then we also the store to the you know that same the checksum into the disk. So I wanna more uh, I wanna introduce more detail on the how so what's the change in the last checksum. That today the checksum, then after you know checksum with the TTMPI. So this is uh, today's how last uh, the checksum works on the on the full write. Uh, so if you are so your application writing from the your, your user space. So last client so accumulating uh, your data into the one RPC as much as possible. Then once the RPC is created, so the the last checksum is calculated. Then the client send out the data, the bulk data, to the server. Then all, at the same time, the you know, last checksum to the you know, send to the you know, server. Then once the the last server is received the RPC, you know the last server recalculate the checksum the based on the arrived to the RPC uh, based on the data. Then the compare to the checksum. Which is uh, you know the client sent to the to the server. Then the both of the checksum is match. The last server uh, sent the data to the disk to BIO. 
So the lead operation is pretty much the same, um, but just the opposite. Uh, if you, the, your application is a request or lead, lead uh, the last server leading the data from the disk, then creating the RPC, then the eventually the you know, calculator checksum on the server, then the last server send out the data to the you know, client, then and also the send the check the calculator checksum to the client, then once client to receive the RPC, then the calculator checksum, then compare to the checksum with the you know, server is sent. Then if the checksum is match, then your application read the data. So we, we have you know, very the protect uh, we have the protect the data the, between the server and the client, but uh, again um, this is the still the between the server and the client. So the how the how, so what is the change after the TTMPI the support the check, last checksum? Uh, so again, so we 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 want to keep you know current the last checksum mechanism, but uh, we added the another checksum for TTMPI. So that w when your application is writing, then last client the generating R RPC. But uh, so last server the calculate the uh, TTMPI the checksum every the sector size. Then once you have the created RPC, so you have the multiple multiple the you know calculate the TTMPI checksum. Then so the last checksum is calculated. The based on the, the T10PI, the checksum. So this is the checksum of the checksum. Uh, then so uh, the last client send the data to the you know, server. Then at the same time, you know, last, last client last client send the calculate the checksum of the checksum to the server as well. Then once the, the server is received the checksum, um, the server recalculated the TTMPI, then, then the until the, you know, R, uh, all the, uh, one, uh, one RPC, then the last checksum is also the calculated based on the, the TTMPI checksum, then the compare to the, you know, checksum the client send. Then if the, you know, last checksum is, you know, the, the match, the last server, last server uh, pass down to the data to the, to the HBA, is the TTMPI information. So the HBA, so once the HBA is received the you know, request, so HBA also the check the data under the TTMPI, then the HBA is verified that the data is the validated, it's no corrupted, or uh, the HBA the send, the send the data to the disk. Then we store the data as well as the TTMPI information to the disk. So lead, lead operation is pretty much the same. Uh, so when the, your application the request the lead operation, then you know you are the last server leading the data from the disk. But uh, so your data is already has the data under the TTMPI information. So the once uh, your server leading the data from the disk, so the sub, the HBA the check, so your data is protected. Uh, your data is validated with a checksum. Um, then if the last server is received on the, uh, the data from the disk, then recalculate and the verify the checksum on the data, then verify the you know, checksum, the TTMPI the checksum. Then, um, so we have the, so, uh, the one RPC, then plus uh, multiple, uh, the multiple the TTMPI information. Then we, we also the calculate the last checksum the based on the you know, TTMPI the checksum, then send out to the send out to the client. Then client also that the check, um, client the uh, recalculate the last TTMPI the checksum. Then the last client the uh, also well, the, fi the eventually the last client calculate the last checksum based on the uh, TTMPI checksum. So the if the, the last checksum is match. So your application read the data. So uh, you can so the, you can see so that we have you know um, data under the protect uh, the protect information to the disk the diff. Then we also so we are sending the you know same information to the client. Then 
they verify, uh, uh, verify the you know, data and the, uh, the checksum on the client as well. So we the implement, uh, so, we, so we now, uh, this is uh, how you know, the last end-to-end -end integrity that works with the T10PI. Uh, so this is a project, uh, project status. Uh, so, uh, so we started uh, this project a couple of months ago. Um, then the, all the, the pro, you know, task is uh, you know, tracked under the Jira ticket on 10472. Uh, so we, we started to uh, submit the patch on the upstream. So we, the, we have the measure the three the patch. So one of the patch in support the T10PI and the BIO. The another another patch in the another patch in the support of the T10PI for the last checksum. Then we have another the patch the T10PI support of the page cache. So right now, so we are cleaning up and the optimization um, on the patch to the finalizing finalizing the patch. The, at the same time, so we started the benchmarking or the functional testing. Uh, adding the, you know, more test code or fault injection, um, then comparing the you know, performance against the today's Rasa checksum. Uh, I wanted to share the, you know, a couple of the, the benchmark results. Um, uh, so we have a very uh, small test environment right now, um, the one MDS, the one OSS, and the one JBot. Um, so the LSA, LSI, the HBA, the support of the T10PI. So we just enable the T10PI, the DIX on the HBA. Um, so connect to the one JBot. Then we, we installed the very the minimum the number of the disk. Um, then we have a, we had a six client. Uh, six clients is connecting with the infinite band EDR. So the, again, so the very, this is a very the limited number of the uh, the number of the limited number of the drives, so we cannot saturate we cannot saturate the maximum of the ED, infinite band the bandwidth. So, so we just so so we so we use the you know IOR for testing, but so in at the same time so we enable the you know last fake IO, because the, you know this is only the network testing. Um, so we are really focusing on the network testing at this moment. Uh, so this is uh, the one of the benchmark result on the client side. So uh, the, how the, the performance is working, uh, how perform, perform, how you know last client will perform well, and the how how much the CPU the usage the impact on the client side. So the left uh, left side. So this is a single client the performance the bandwidth. Uh, we tested from the single thread. Two thread the up to the 20 thread. 20 thread. So uh, we are uh, we are saturating the you know six nine gigabyte per sec. Uh, uh, sorry. So we, we tested the two last uh, checksum algorithm. So one is a CRC 32C. The another checksum is a Adora checksum. Uh, Adora. Uh, so the bandwidth is pretty much same. So even though we enable the T10PI. Uh, then the CPU usage, uh, the, when we enable the, the CRC 32C, the, the CPU usage is pretty much the same uh, without the T10PI, with the T10PI. However, so the, the, uh, the other one, uh, today the checksum is the more CPU usage than, you know, uh, after the patch. The, because the, um, so we, so we use so we use, we use the last checksum. The last checksum is now the checksum on the checksum after the patch, right? So, so the checksum the, the data size is uh, it's more the smaller than the you know, last checksum the today. So that's why the CPU usage on the you know, smaller smaller than uh, after the patch for the other case. But uh, you know CRC thirty two C. It's a so less impact because you know we offload, so we offload the calculation on the you know CPU, uh, um, from the CPU. So this is still the single client testing. 
um, but a read, uh, file path process, and sequential read. Uh, so we also same testing from the one thread uh, to up to the uh, 20 thread. Uh, so we we also the bandwise pretty much same. So expect uh, except uh, Adora case. This is a today's Adora algorithm. Uh, today the last checksum algorithm. Uh, this is the same reason. Um, so we have the more the CPU usage or CPU time uh, for Adora. Well, today's the last checksum because the more you know data set was larger than you know after the patch. Um, but as the CPU usage on the CRC 32C is a pretty much same, you know, after the patch and the, after the patch and the before the patch. So this is a um, test result on the server side, the how the T10PI that checks some of the impact on the server side. Um, so we are we are saturating. Uh, we are also so this is uh, from the six client. Then we run the you know uh, the IOR from six six process to up to the 120 in the process. Uh, so uh, in, even that, so we didn't see the you know performance impact are very much. Uh, so it's really the minimum of the performance impact even though you know after the patch. However, it's the same uh, the other case. Today's the last check some other. It's more the CPU usage, um, but the CRC started to see. It's a, uh, it's very the you know close the CPU usage the before and after the, the patch. So this is the same benchmarking on the but the client side on the lead. Uh, it's also the, the performance is quite the same, uh, except uh, Adora. Uh, then the CPU usage a little bit higher. The Adora case is the CPU usage a little bit higher than the after the patch. Um, but the CRC started to see, this is still the offloading on the checksum calculation from the CPU. Uh, this is less the performance impact, uh, this, this less performance impact um, so less the CPU usage impact as well. Um, this is a summary. So uh, so we we started the working. We are working on the uh, design of the implementing on the last end to end data integrity. Um, so uh, we don't we we want to keep you know last checksum framework. So uh, we reuse the you know, current last checksum, then just adding you know, another that, you know, integrity with the T10PI. Uh, still flexible, uh, really the, you know, adaptable. So you can, you can, so any you know, T10PI on the DX supported hardware that works, even the software. So as you see, uh, it's a, even the, it's a small the tester environment, so we didn't see the you know, performance impact at this moment. Of course, we need more the testing on the large, large scale, but uh, this, is, this current performance number is encouraging for us. For us. Uh, so it's really, really the you know, performance impact for now. Um, so we are still, still working on the cleaning up, you know, the shaping of the code, um, adding the more test code. Uh, of course, we are continuing to the benchmarking and uh, more test, testing the many of the failure scenario. Um, then we are still missing the you know, benchmarking from the end to end. So we are only the, the benchmarking right now from the last client to the server. So uh, finally, so we really need to do the you know, benchmarking from the end to end. Any if there any the performance impact after that. Thank you. Okay, we have time for maybe a couple questions for Suichi. Can you explain a little how the, um, what happens when the T10 uh, information doesn't match? Like what does Luster do, I guess, when it gets to the client? 
Um, in right now, so uh, just a just a return the error. You'll try again. So the the client will. I think there there might be a tunable, but it, I think it it retries ten times to do the network transfer. Either way, on the reads or the writes, it will um, retry if there's just a transient network problem, um, and then if it um, does the RPC ten times and it still doesn't, uh, you know, have any success, it returns an error to the application. Process right. checksum. Yeah. Okay. The Mellanox uh, ICER driver. Yeah. So the um, so at the beginning of the test, so we started the uh, Mellanox ICER with the enabled uh, uh, DTM PI, but somehow um, um, system system is not uh, it's not stable. Um, I don't know why, but uh, then we changed the you know configuration on the you know, test environment, you know more you know standard the JBoard the HBA. Uh, so we need to more to investigate the, but uh, it works. So we we started the beginning of the test, but uh, eventually it's not stable. So we need to investigate why it didn't didn't work. But we've seen some issues with performance for larger block transfer sizes with, uh, of course, using MoFed as well. So anyway, we filed something on that. So if you have T10 going, is there a reason you just couldn't turn off luster checksums? So you don't have to checksum the checksum? Oh, uh, um, th this is uh, uh, still uh, under the discussion, but uh, it's, it's a in independent, uh, independent, you know, luster checksum on the T10 PI. So we can still uh, keep the, you know, we can still, or even though we don't store the PI information to the disk, so we can still have you know additional the checksum on the last checksum the checksum the between the server and the client, or we are still to keep you know traditional the last checksum. Then once you know T10 PI is supporting the server, so um, so the either way it works, but it's still under the discussion which is better. So just to be clear, it's not that the luster checksum is. Again, checksumming the data, right? You're still only there. There were the one of the issues with the older version of the T10 patch, is that it set it sent all of the T10 um, individual sector checksums over the network with the, each RPC, and because those are, um, you know, you might have in a in a once we have 16 megabyte RPCs, you might have 4,000, you know, pages, right? That would be um, 32,000. Five 12 byte sectors, each checksum is two bytes. So it's 64K of checksum data with every RPC, right? And that's brutal. And so instead, you checksum the T10 PI information and only send like a four byte checksum over the wire. So when it says we're reusing the Lustre checksums, it means we're reusing the network infrastructure to send the Lustre checksum over the wire. And then because you have to verify your data when it arrives at the server anyways, you already have to recalculate the T10 PI information on the server side just to verify that the data got there correctly, right? And so when you're doing that, you just save up all of the T10 PI information, you verify the checksum of the checksums, and then if the two you know, checksums of checksums match, you know that all of the T10 PI checksums are the same and then you know that the, the data is the same as well, right? And so it's not that you're still doing a luster level, you know, RPC checksum that's overhead. It's just we're using the infrastructure to pass that information through the network. And it just, T10 PI just shows up as a new checksum type in addition to CRC32, CRC32C, and Adler, and whatever, right? 